and it's a special episode. No, it is not because Baby Yoda is with us today. It is because this is the final quarantine show of the Beer Bros. We're done with Hopefully it. Ever. Hopefully ever. Hopefully we don't. We aren't back here. Not that we don't like doing these, but it's better to be in person having the same beers. Go on over there, little buddy. I am Joe, and with me, as always, is my fine compatriot, Rob. Rob, how you been, man? How's the week going? Good, man. It was a short week. Can't complain. Uh, time to get some beers cracked. Absolutely. It is, it is perfect beer drinking weather. Uh, we, are, we are in summer now. I don't care when the solstice starts. It's summertime. Uh, and uh, places opened up. Yeah, places are open, uh, you know, in limited capacity. I mean... Again, still practice your social distancing. We don't want to open these places back up, and then in two weeks, right back here doing more shows like this. So, uh, exactly. Let's get to it. We got we got a fun show. Uh, got some got a bunch of local breweries coming in. Finishing, uh, you know, recapping some some curbside pickup we did. We got a fun final list for you guys. Like I said, this is our tenth and final quarantine show. Rob and I will be back. In regular podcast form, starting either next week or the week after. I don't know. I'm kind of busy next week. So uh, we'll discuss that later. Let's get to it, Rob. Uh, Before we do it, as usual, give us the rundown on where people can reach out to us. Yeah, follow us on Untapped, Dub Beer Bros. Uh, Email us at dubbeerbros at gmail.com. Listen to our past podcasts and future podcasts coming up. Uh, we're on Apple, Spotify, Anchor. Find us on all three. Uh, find us on Twitter at Beer Bros One. We're gonna do some more impromptu reviews this weekend, um, especially because I, I had a lot more beer prepared for quarantine episodes. But that's gonna be hopefully the end of it. So yeah, hopefully we can hopefully. just incorporate them either into the show or impromptu. So right. Uh, also Instagram Beer Bros Pod. Uh, and then like and follow the Facebook page where we post YouTube videos and the future podcasts. Yep. And, you know, follow, you know, continue to follow us on YouTube as well. This isn't going to be the last YouTube video we do. We could no. choose to continue to put out a video format, but you know, once things start to open, once fests start to happen, we're going to have a whole lot more content out there. We had a whole lot planned. Obviously it fell through, but uh, we may, we've made the best of it. Let's get into it, Rob. You want to introduce your players? Absolutely. So the first one that I'm going to be trying kind of hits near and dear to yeah. home for Joe and I. Uh, I made a little run to Pollyanna. Uh, they're located in Lamont, but I actually picked this up from their St. Charles location called Dogma. See the Husky? It's a little – it's an NIU beer. NIU beer. Love it. Uh, and then we got a couple – couple guys here from Brickstone, from my Brickstone brewing uh, trip to Bourbon A. Uh, we got Permanent Vacation, which is a Citra IPA. And then we got Haze Juice, which is, uh, it's actually a stout. Really? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a hazy IPA. <laughs> it was a, that would have been another hazy is lazy situation. Um, right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then for myself, uh, the last beer from my first run of curbside pickup, we got Infinite Citra from Pipeworks Brewing, and then we've got we've got big boys. It's Friday. It's Crowler Friday, baby. Uh, big got, beer Friday. We got uh, from Goose Island Dank Detector, and from Revolution we have Escuela. Uh, should be should be a good show full of a bunch of local Illinois, Chicago, a whole lot of awesome local breweries. Uh, Continue to support them. If they still offer curbside, you're not you're not feeling like going out. Still do your curbside. Um, let's get to it. Who's going first? Um, I I really cannot wait to crack open this dogma. So you're up. I'm gonna go first. So uh, dogma is a collaboration with NIU's alumni association. Um, so per their website, the description. Uh, it's brewed with uh, German Pilsner malt 
a touch of German hops, and Kolsch yeast. We teamed up with NIU Alumni Association to bring in this easy drinking and crisp German style Kolsch. Pour it out. Uh, it's very light. I mean, it's very light actually. I mean, it does have like a little, as like as Joe likes to say, a yellow hue. Yeah, it's a little yellow. It kind of looks like pineapple juice. I mean, honest. It does a little bit. Um, it does remind me of like a summer beer with the smell. Like I think of like uh, you know Goose Island's original. Uh, what was it called? It, um, the original summer beer. Summer what? ale. I think it was just their summer ale. Okay. Like I think. I I'll, they used to have a summer Kolsch. I'll, I'll fact check. Kind of smells like that. Very crisp uh, in the smell. I mean, I don't, I, I'm kidding. Guess no. You throw a lot of smells, but it kind of remind you of like, um, or Pilsner Lager, I should say. What's that? <laughs> You were frozen on my screen for a... Oh, all right. <laughs> so it smells kind of like your typical, like, uh, Pilsner or lager. 5.2% uh, is the ABV, so um, sounds pretty easy drinking, but... There's only one way to find out. Let's fact check. It's crisp. Um, it's... I don't know. It's not. I don't think it's anything that's going to blow you away. It's very easy drinking for sure. Uh, it's crushable. You could definitely drink like a, a four pack and not feel anything or not not notice. Um, it kind of ha um, it has a really good aftertaste actually. Um, I don't know if it's it's probably the malt, um, but. It, uh, I, I don't really want to compare it to like a light beer, but it's, and I think I have said this before, but the aftertaste kind of reminds me of Miller Lite, like a little craftier of a Miller Lite, just kind of has a little touch of that bite at the end, but um, it's not overpowering. I think it's pretty refreshing. Are you getting any fruit kind of flavors to it or? No. Um, I wouldn't say so. It's it's more like uh, it's more just hops at the back end with that aftertaste, um, or maybe it's it, it's actually probably more that malty taste. It's not really hops. Um, um, I guess food pairing time of year. I mean, you could really pair this with a lot of different things. Uh, I want to pair this with probably uh, food on the grill. You know, get a Polish sausage. Uh, get Get yourself a brat, hot dogs, Chicago dogs. I uh, pair it some, with something like that. Um, you could also pair it with something very hearty, just because of how light it tastes. Uh, time of year, I'm I'm gonna go like right now. I mean, spring, summer. You know, that that's the time of year you drink these types of summer kolsches, uh, ales. You know, anything that's kind of a in the lighter variety is probably the best time of year, summer or spring. All right. Awesome. Uh, and what rating are you giving this one here? Hmm. I'm a fan of this. I, I do like it. I like this aftertaste. Um, I'm going to give it a 3.61. 3.61. Are you giving a little NIU boost to it? A little NIU boost. Yeah. Would you, would you drink it on the patios of Aspen Court? Uh, 100% I would. Fun fact, that's where Rob and I lived our senior year of college. Um, Hopefully Fatty's has it now. They, I, I would be stunned if they didn't. I mean, they probably aren't serving it right now, but no, at some point they will. Um, all right, awesome. Any last uh, notes on Dogma? That's it. Awesome. All righty. Move on to... My first beer. I'm sorry, I said Escuela. That is incorrect. It's Escalera. That's my bad. Escuela is cool. Yeah. 
I, I, I dropped Spanish. I didn't. I wasn't good at it. Uh, I, I'm not, there's no use showing me the can. It's the Crowler can. Showed them before. We've got a few other ones over there. Uh, let's give a quick description here. It is a Mexican lager, 5.3% ABV. It is a bright, oh, sorry, a bright sunny day calls for a bright, refreshing Mexican lager. So we brewed the one we all wanted to drink, snappy and refreshing on its own, or wonderful, wonderful in a Micheleda. I don't know what that is. Balls are no problem when you've got La Escalera. Uh, buenas. <laughs> buenas. I'm not good in Spanish, okay? So... Sorry. You got a lime? No. <laughs> I have ones that have been in my fridge in a while, but I don't want to touch those. Yeah, probably not a good idea. Oh, that was a bad pour. Notice these, these crawlers are a lot harder to crack, especially. Yeah, I, I don't judge crawler cracks as. Uh... Don't tell. Ugh! Uh oh, what are we missing? Got a little spillage, gotta clean that up. <laughs> ah, all right. All right. Take a look at that. Uh, you know, kind of along the same line as most lagers and pilsners, just kind of that golden color to it. Pretty see through. Um, smell wise, it smells like just about, you know, like a Miller Lite or. Maybe even, you know, if it's a Mexican lager, Corona, Modelo, you know, take your pick. It's probably what it smells like. Pacifico, it smells like that. So uh, yep. let's give it a, let's give it a drink because there's only really one way to find out. I thought there were two ways. That was wild. Yeah, so I mean, not going to spend a whole lot of time on taste. If you go back and listen to like half of these episodes where a lager or pilsner is, you'll just know my, my statement on it. It's good. It's not going to blow you away by any means. It's just, it's, it's a lager. It, you know, it's solid. It's solid. It's, you know, it's not, I would say the only one that wasn't really like that was tooth and claw where I think it was just a little bit more smooth and had a little bit more flavor palette to it. But I think, you know, you put this and a few others in front of me, I probably won't tell the difference. I think they're they're all similar, but I mean, it's fine. Consistency in a beer is totally fine. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a solid beer. It's very drinkable. Um, but definitely, I'll bring it back. definitely, the trains are coming. Um, flavor wise, I would say, or uh, time of year wise, I actually would say that this is. Not as, you know, plug in any season. I think this does actually really fit more the spring, summer kind of taste and style. Uh, I don't know. Just it, it seems like it has a little bit more lightness to it than others. Um, and still, but still, it's a solid beer. Not going to blow you away by any means. Food-wise, again, really just a thing. I mean, yeah, tacos, I guess. It's not, but it's not like, you know, like the goals I had or beer for tacos that I've had, like where those are like, yeah, absolutely have them for tacos. You don't need to only have this with tacos. You can have it with pretty much anything and it's going to, it's going to taste the same. It's going to, it's going to have the same effect anywhere you drink it. So, uh, but that's no fun to say anything. So I'll think of something. Let's go with, hmm. Enchiladas. Rob, very stereotypical of you. <laughs> uh, no, we're we're gonna go, we're gonna go with some euros. We have this with a euro. All right. The Greek taco. All righty. <laughs> um. <laughs> Score wise, uh, I don't know, two point nine eight. It's good, but I just, I, I, you know, it's it's just along the same line, so I'm not really going to score it any higher than any of the other ones. So, it's a solid beer. It's good. 
if, if it's on tap, I'm sure I would get it, but uh, yeah, it's not going to blow you away. Awesome. Awesome. All righty. Brickstone. Yep. So we are going to start with permanent vacation, a Citra IPA. Ooh, not a bad crack. It's getting better. Um, so I did, uh, I don't really have a fun fact for Brickstone that they don't really have a whole lot on their website, but they are very, uh, very small microbrewery, but their, uh, their restaurant is huge. Their brew pub. And it really made me want to go back. I actually did get to go inside. So I did kind of see some of it and, um, it looks like a good time. I, I really can't wait for it to open back up. Hopefully. Maybe we take a trip to see the Bears in training camp and we stop at Brickstone afterwards. You can left fans there. So, um, pour this one out. So, permanent vacation, little description from their website. This refreshing Citra IPA is brewed solely with cryo Citra uh, Luplin, Luplin 2 hop pellets. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Brim, brimming with tropical notes of grapefruit and pineapple. Uh, this 12 ounce trip to your happy place is perfect for those days you want to leave work and never come back. I felt like that today. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to try this. Uh, very golden in color. It's, um, I think I was expecting a little bit of bigger foam head, although, you know, it might have been by the way I poured it as well. Um, it's definitely very tropical. It's, uh, I, I mean, I, I just, I smell so much fruit in it. It's very juicy in the smell. Uh, I mean, pine, you pick up a pineapple and grapefruit right away. Pineapple probably more so, okay. but this beer, this beer makes me want to sit on a beach in in hawaii and drink it but there's only one way to find out well actually there's three i'm just gonna drink them here uh, it's definitely uh got a little more hoppy bite to it than i expected i i think i was expecting it to be um Maybe uh, not as hoppy, but it's very tasty. Okay. Uh, do you get the grapefruit and pineapple taste? Uh, I feel like I get more of the grapefruit and the taste than the pineapple. Like the pineapple, I get more of the, when I smell it. But tasting it, I mean, I there's a lot of citra notes in it, obviously. I mean... But I, I think it's very well balanced uh, between hop and like citrusness, trop, that, all those tropical flavors. I, it's a really good beer. Uh, ABV is, I believe, six percent. Yes. Um, so forgot to bring out the can. Take a little look at it. Kind of an weird interesting design i don't know i've always thought brickstone's cans were kind of rough to look at yeah not as aesthetically pleasing as others right right um what uh, i guess uh time of year you know this is you know again i feel like any kind of like uh any like IPA or beer with like citra and like uh, tropical like uh, flavors to it. I, I feel like it just always reminds me of summer. So I hate to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say the summer. Uh, I'm like a broken record. Food pairing. I, I really wouldn't pair it with something too overpowering. I mean, you could go with your basic cheeseburger and I think it would pair well with it. Um, And then score wise, I do like this. Um, I'm gonna go with a three point 
seven two. Point seven two. Right. Permanent vacation. Any last notes on that one? Um, I think you got to try it, Joe. I think you would like it. There's only one way to find. Only way to find out. All right, awesome. Look forward to it. We'll have, we'll have a beer together. Well, we already had a beer together. It's but again soon. All righty, moving on to mine. We got Goose Island Dank Detector. Uh, if you look there, 6.5% ABV. The can is the same Goose Island can we've shown before, so no need to go over that. Let's give you a quick description here. It is an IPA wrote with roasting hops. Dank Detector is a hop-forward ale with notes of red fruit and tropical aromas, with a big helping of dank to balance it out. This beer also has a light multi-body and a soft bitterness. Pretty good. Sounds pretty uh, tropical. Let's get a... That wasn't actually too bad. That was a lot better than the first one. Let's make sure the pour is better. Yeah, missed it. The fuck is the thing that broke the fuck? Clean these up, man. Shit. Gross. All right. Uh, significantly darker than the last one. Actually, very dark. Wow. Um, very good foam head on that. Yeah, that is uh, quite dark. I mean, it is an IPA, so that makes a little bit of sense. Um, yeah. Uh, smell wise, I think it's pretty much on par with a lot of IPAs. You get that. You get that very hoppy smell. Uh, a little bit of maltiness to it as well. I think maybe with the foam, and I don't get as, as good of a smell to it. But yeah, yeah I think yeah, definitely you definitely just get that very hot, hot forward smell with a little maltiness mixed in there. But uh, there are seven ways to find out. There's only one way. Oh, needs the extra sip. Okay. Uh, so the second sip was a little bit better. Uh, the first sip, I really didn't get a, much of a taste. The second one, I think I get a little bit more of that maltiness. Not a whole lot of hop to it, which uh, kind of surprising with the smell. Um, the first, the first sip was a little bland. It didn't really taste much. Uh, um. You cut out there for a sec. What was that? I said, uh oh, that's a sign of coronavirus. No, no taste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, very easy drinking, I would say. Uh, the maltiness, it's a little bit of a bitter, more bitter aftertaste, I would say, but going down, I think it's very smooth, very easy going. The more I drink it, the more I like it. It says like notes of red fruit. I wonder. I don't really taste much fruitiness to it. I don't think there's a whole lot of it. I think I think that was a very minor part to it, maybe. But I really, don't, I really don't taste a whole lot of fruit. I think it is more just very a lot more bitter maltiness to it than uh, than I would say fruity. Well, if it's kind of like no. When they say red uh, fruit, I kind of wonder what they're referring to. Like, if it's like a cherry taste, I mean, obviously, that's going to be more bitter. So, I, that would make sense. Strawberries, cherries, apples. What are the red fruits? Dragon fruit? Is that red? <laughs> I don't even know what a dragon fruit is. You don't know what a dragon fruit is? No. Look it up, man. It looks wild. Uh, that's going to do it, see? Time of year wise, you know, I think they're kind of selling it as a summer beer, but I think this actually fits more during the fall uh, when it's a, not not like super cold, but you know, it's kind of that between that summer and fall, you know, where it's just like you kind of need a jacket, but you can do all right without it. Um, you could drink it at a tailgate if you wanted, but 
It's actually not a bad patio beer, I would say. Yeah, not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of flavor, uh, not hop flavor or fruit flavor. I think it is just a very malty bitter kind of taste. It's not bad. Enjoy. It's enjoyable. It's crushable. Um, food pairing wise, food pairing wise, I'm trying to think. Hmm. Yep. I think this would probably go really well with a sausage or a brat. Um, you could certainly batter the beers in the brat. I think it would go well with it. Um, yeah, I think I think you know any kind of sausage or brat will be uh, will be sufficient with this beer. Get a little, get a little Dijon mustard on there would uh, would go pretty well together. Score wise, I mean it's not my favorite, but I do enjoy it. I would probably get it again on tap if they if. Uh, if it was available. So let's give it a 3.19. Okay. 3.19. It's a solid beer. I think, uh, I think you could enjoy it. Uh, you know, especially if you, if you don't like hops, I think you would really enjoy this. I don't think it's very hoppy. I think it's just more malty. So uh, yeah, we got Going with a 3.19, I'm sticking to it. Awesome. All righty. We are going to be on to my last beer. Another one from Burkstone. It's Hayes Juice. It, um, it's actually um, – it's a limited release. So this isn't one of their regulars. It was – so I'll just say the description. Prepare to be um, um, hazed. Joe liked that one. Whoa, that's good. That's clever. That's clever. Prepared to be um hazed, hazed juice. The first can brew in our hazed up series is brewed to perfection with citra, mosaic, and huel huel mosaic. melon hops, giving it strong taste of grapefruit and citrus. Get hazed this summer. Ah, hazing's not good. I think my uh, my other crack was a lot better than this one. I didn't even hear you. Th that crack. Okay. So that that tells you. Take with take with that. Not a good crack. Right away. I mean, it's it looks like your typical hazy IPA. Very cloudy. Very opaque. Um, very uh, very pineapple juice looking or orange juice looking. Um, Ooh, it smells delicious. Like it kind of smells a little bit like permanent vacation, but if you made it like a hazy IPA, like you get a lot of that pineapple and citra smells to it. Um, and of course the mosaic hops are going to make it dry, uh, you know, as they do with a lot of different hazy IPAs. So I am very excited to try this. Well, there's only one way to find out. That's right. Yum. Yeah, that's a solid hazy. Um, I mean, it. what I really like with a lot of hazy IPAs is that dryness. And it definitely has that, but it's also balanced well with a very juicy, citrusy taste. Um, you know, obviously it doesn't taste, um, it's not, it's not too bitter or anything. It's very refreshing still. Um, just a very tasty beverage. You get a little bit of that kind of creamy mouthfeel that you kind of associate with, uh, hazy IPAs. Although I feel like it's a little more dry than most hazies, which I really like. I love any kind of dry beers. Um, you know, time of year, this is definitely going to be summer. Um, this is this is a golf beer. Oh, interesting. 
What makes it a golf beer, Rob? I could just see myself drinking a few of these while uh, while golfing. Um, forgot to show the can, so I think this can's a little easier to look at. I like the colors with it. I mean, you got the red, green, and and yellow with it. Um, it definitely makes me think more tropical and summer summery when I look at this beer. It looks like fruit stripe. What's that? The can looks like like the fruit stripe gum. Uh, yeah. Tastes better than fruit. Uh, ABV 6.7. Uh, food pairing. Uh, like I said, I, I still think it's very tasty and smooth. So I don't, I don't really sense the heaviness with it as I did with permanent vacation. Uh, or, or it's not as I. I don't know if I would say permanent vacation was as, was heavy, but it was definitely definitely more heavy than their hazy IPA. Um, I want something, I want barbecue. I want like a pulled pork sandwich, um, maybe a, um, uh, like a rib sandwich, something like that. Okay. <laughs> what was that? Is that a thing? I, that's not the name, but I, I can imagine it. In my head, I just can't think of the name. A McRib. I don't want to say the McRib though. <laughs> we won't get sued. No one um, I would definitely pair it though with some. I mean, you could pair it with some wings too, but I, I would definitely recommend something with barbecue sauce, something tangy, uh, maybe something uh, even like a honey barbecue sauce. I think would pair well with it. Um, very tasty. Uh, and I'm going to rate this. We're about to shoot into the fours. Whoa. Rob, this, one is a, here. this one is a 4.03. Just makes it in there. I would go back to Brickstone just for that beer. And I also want to try it on tap. Oh, awesome. All right. Uh, any last notes on any of your beers, Dogma, Permanent Vacation, or... I forgot the last one. <laughs> Haze juice. Haze juice. Um, I guess Brickstone has other hazy IPAs too, so I, I really want to try some of their, you know, they have the whole series of like hazed up. So I really want to try some of their other stuff and see how good it is compared to this one. All right. Awesome. Very cool. Check out Brickstone and Pollyanna. Support them. Move on to the final beer of the quarantine show. Closing out with Pipeworks Infinite Citra. You take a look at this can. Some trippy ass shit. We got some cats right here in this little thing. Whoa. Got claws. Very psychedelic. Uh, almost kind of looks like an old old school throw rug, too. It's, looks, it's pretty wild, man. It's, uh... I don't remember seeing this one on their website. Uh, it was a little bit more down. Okay. We did pour here. All righty. Take a look there. Definitely a lot lighter. Um, actually, a lot lighter than your, kind of your Citra beer. Uh, yeah. Your Citra IPA. A lot, lot lighter. Kind of. Uh, i going to pinpoint what kind of beer it does kind of look like. I don't know. Much lighter, golden, kind of kind of similar to uh, Escalera. Smell-wise, you do get that <clears throat> citrus, uh, you know, the, the citra kind of smell to it. A little bit more hop, hoppy in the smell. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much along the same lines as Rob's without the grapefruit or pineapple smell. But, uh, there's only one way to find out. That is definitely 
much happier than the dank detector. Um, Interesting. So, so it's a little bit of a bitter aftertaste, but not overwhelming by any means. Oh, there was no description, by the way. Pipeworks doesn't really give descriptions. Yeah. Uh, it, was a, it, it is 7.3% ABV on that. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, not bad. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think maybe it's it's just got a little bit more of like a tropical flavor than say a ninja versus unicorn. But I think uh, I think those are kind of two two similar beers. Uh, just this one, a little bit more tropical. I think not as not as heavy as a ninja versus unicorn, but still pretty good. Ninja versus unicorn, by the way, episode four of our podcast. If you want to check that out. That was a solid beer. Very good. Pipeworks makes good beer, man. Uh, Not as good as their dark lager, but or that dark IPA, but still pretty good. We'll have none of that. I'm gonna mute Rob for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a solid beer. Um, you're not muted anymore. I see that. Ninja versus Unicorn was the double IPA, right? Correct. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was good. Beer. It was definitely a lot smoother. So, if you're not really into IPAs, I think this, you know, I think this is a good one to kind of jump into. It's a little, you know, it's a little bit on the heavier side, but I think you could still enjoy it. It does have that little bit of a tropical finish to it, little bitterness at the end of it as well. But still a very solid beer. Time of year wise, I think it's kind of similar to Dank Detector. I think it's like right at the start of fall. It's not too cold yet. Um, actually, pretty much all of fall. You know, it does have a little heaviness to it. So you are going to feel a little bit warmer when you drink this beer. So I would probably not drink this out in the sun. You would probably die. Um, maybe. From coronavirus. No, we're done with that. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah. It's a solid beer. Definitely. Uh, not the glass over. Uh, food pairing wise, I mean, I said I already used brat and sausage, so I can't use it again, but it would go all right with that. Uh, let's go with. Yeah, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a, uh, chicken drumstick, chicken breast, you know, fried chicken. I think it would go well with that. Um, you know, I think it's you know, kind of a light, lighter, lighter meal. Um, yeah, I think I think it would go pretty well with that. Now that wasn't that wasn't good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna call myself out on that one. Let's think a little bit better. Let's think bigger. Maybe not bigger. Uh, let's go with... I don't know. Let's just stick with fried chicken. I can't think of anything. Um, grilled, I had grilled cheese tonight. We'll, we'll go with grilled cheese. Let's go with the grilled Ooh. cheese. You know, throw a little, throw a little pork, pork on there if you want. Maybe some pepperoni. I don't know. Throw a little meat on there. I think it'd be, I think it'd go pretty well with it. So, um, okay. Yeah, score wise, I mean, I I think very highly of Pipeworks, so this would be a little bit higher of a score. I think uh, I think it does grade a lot better because it's a good excuse me IPA for people who don't like IPAs. So let's go with a three point eight two on Infinite Citra. Ooh, you say three point eight two. Yes, All that right. is correct. I don't know if that's higher than Ninja versus Unicorn. If it is, then I have to change my Ninja versus Unicorn score because I think Ninja versus Unicorn is better, just in my opinion, because I do prefer double IPAs. But I think this is uh, a very good beer. Uh, if, you, if you're not the biggest IPA fan, you're looking to get into one. I think this is one you can. 
But uh, very good beer. Pipeworks, once again, knocking it out of the park. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's allergies, not corona. But uh, that will... Eh, I'm, not, I'm never sure. Uh, but that will conclude the beer portion of the show and the beer portion of the quarantine show. So long as we're not back here in two weeks when it spikes up again. Um, Rob, any, la- any last notes on any of your beers that you've tried throughout these 10, uh, 10 weeks, 10 episodes? Um, you have a favorite. Do I have a favorite from the bunch? Uh, it could, you you know, know, it anything during quarantine, even if the one wasn't on this show, but maybe you put it up on uh, the, uh, like an impromptu. I mean, I definitely had a lot of interesting ones. I had like a, there was a peanut butter porter that was definitely like a real dessert beer. Um, I, I would say the haste juice was really good. Uh, but one that's sticking to my mind, and I definitely want to pick up this year's uh, edition, and that is the, uh, um, the Goose Island brand stout. So. Uh, their barrel aged uh, stout. I I really want the bottle of this year's edition. Might have to go back to Goose Island and pick myself up a pick myself up one. That was very delicious. However, you know I would probably drink that more around like when it's a little colder out. So we are starting to get to more of that summer uh, that summer weather. So it's time to break out those summer beers. All right, yeah, yeah. and uh, if you listen to our first show back, our first podcast, we will be unveiling a little little uh, summer project that we have coming out. So, yes, uh, forward to that. Yeah, uh, for me, I mean, yeah, a lot of good ones. Actually, I think my favorite of the bunch that I didn't even have on the show was Center Square from Three Floyd's Brewing. Their uh, their hazy IPA, it was delicious. It had peach juice in it. It was phenomenal. Um, if we're looking for one from yeah, if we're looking for one from the show. I mean, Revolution had quite a few that were really good. The Galaxy Hero, Double Dry Hopped, Spirit of Revolt, Jumpy Juice. I think all of those were deli- definitely Working Man, Mild was really good. Um, Oh, there was another one that I had. Which one was it? I mean, Table Salt was really good. Uh, here for t- oh, Tooth and Claw, that one was delicious. Um, got that one now. Yeah, yeah. Rob's got it. He confirmed it is delicious. Um, Very good yeah, beer. A lot, a lot of good beers. You know, if, if there was some positives that came out of this, you know, we definitely kind of tried a lot of different things that we maybe – wouldn't have taken the risk if it was twelve dollars for one beer to try and so it was like hey you know it's twelve bucks for a four pack for support to local business during a, during a pandemic yeah let's fucking do it let's uh, do it you know, there were some I mean I never I never really had like a dud per se just ones that it wasn't as big of a fan but still all around solid bunch of beers Absolutely. very enjoyable awesome um, well, next well, week uh, I want to give a little tease for next week. We'll do it at the end of the show too, but we will be doing half acre in our return video, uh, our podcast. So we have, uh, I've got four beers lined up for that. Um, yeah, no we'll, more video. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll reveal that on the show. So, um, but let's get, let's get into our final list here, Rob. We've got a, it's our final, final entry in our would get a drink series. It is, we would top five musicians we would get a drink with. And then as a final closing out the top five things we miss about the real world, hopefully come back to some capacity in the near future. Right. Uh, let's get into the musicians since you went first for beers. I guess I'll go first on the list. Um, number five for me. I guess it's five and six, but I, I kind of want to pair these two together. I think it makes a lot of sense. And that is Queen B and Jay-Z. I think they would be awesome to get a drink with, like the ultimate power couple right here. Uh, 
Okay. I think that would be really cool. I think they have a lot of experience just in the, in general. Jay Z's he's got his hands in, in in a whole lot of different you know businesses and music and Beyonce as well. She's also an act, a very, actually a pretty good actress if if I'm going to say so myself. Um, not a lot of artists, uh, you know, musicians tend to be, but she, she was, I mean, she's, she's the queen for a reason. Uh, I think, I think they would be such a fun couple to kind of get drinks with and just hear about kind of their, their experience as, uh, as musicians and as husband and wife as well. Awesome. I like the number five choice. I, I really do. Uh, number five for me, I am going with someone with the sole purpose of trying to get their band back together um, because I would go see them in concert. Uh, that's uh, Gwen Stefani. I want No Doubt to get back together. And I didn't realize you were such a big No Doubt fan. <laughs> a lot of things you don't know about me. <laughs> but I think she would be, I mean, she probably has a lot of cool stories. Um, I, I'd, I'd love to talk to her and, and get a beer with her. Um, so yeah, Gwen Stefani, let's get No Doubt back together. Wow, that is, that's a shocker right there, Rob. I would have never pegged you for Gwen Stefani. That's a number 16 seed right there. <laughs> I'm so central here. Uh, number four for me is Marcus Mumford from Mumford & Sons. I'm a big Mumford & Sons guy. If you can't tell by the look of me, I probably could fit it. Like, I went to a Mufford & Sons concert. I feel like I looked like I was part of the band. You wear, I wore a flannel. It looked, it looked like I was a part of it. But, I mean, he's a guy who, him and I could just sit in a pub, order drinks, and just, like, listen to some, listen some good vibe, you know, good vibe music. And just, have, just you know, it would just be a good time. I think, you know, I kind of, I, I don't know. I don't look as, as good of them, but I think I kind of do look like Marcus Mumford a little bit. Maybe that's just not a good look into my eyes, but I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. No, there's some yeah. there's out there where I kind of, we kind of look similar. Um, I could be totally wrong. Who knows? It's the beer. It's, it could be the beer talking, but uh, Marcus Mumford, I think, would just be such an awesome guy to get a drink with. Or two. Or so. Solid. Rob, you're All number right. four. Number four, I am going with a guy, and I kind of wonder if you have him on your list as well, because uh, his band is uh, the first uh, album I ever bought, first no, CD I, I ever bought. I don't have this guy on my list. Okay. So this was, I mean, it's, they're still one of my favorite bands of all time, but in fourth grade, they were the band for Joe and I. Um, and that is Green Day. That's Billy Joe Armstrong. Would love to get a drink with that guy. I think he's a little too political for my taste. A little bit, but but no, very good choice. I'm sure he has some some pretty awesome stories. Um, sorry, I feel like I kind of oh, your thunder there. Go ahead and yeah, go ahead and give your reasoning. I didn't really let you give your reasoning. Oh. Um, I mean, I, I kind of talked about it. I, you know, I, I mean, we've been following Green Day since like fourth grade. And I mean, they've been around since the nineties. I mean, I was supposed to see him in August at Wrigley Field with Fall Apple. Three of my favorite things. And I can't tell Not damn coronavirus. I, I, I would just like to make the statement that I am anti-coronavirus. I don't know if I made it. <laughs> I was uh, planning to go to Riot Fest to see MCR, and that's canceled, too. I was going to see Blink-182 in, like, four weeks. Not happening either. Nope. I don't think so. But, no, great choice. Definitely want to meet him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number three for me is uh, it's a Chicago guy. Would love to, you know, I think he, he's someone that I think he just has a very good outlook on life. He's also pretty funny. Uh, and that's Chance the Rapper. I think, uh, I, I think, I think him and I, like, I think he is just someone who could, you, you could really have a good discussion with. Um, and 
uh, as a bonus, he, he's a Chicago guy. He, you know, yeah, right. he's a Sox. We don't have to talk about that, but, you know. You can go he, to yeah, the Sox game with him. Have a beer there. Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah no, I, I, I just think he is – he's one of, he's one of my favorite artists. I think he just – he makes great music, and he's, you know, yeah, I, I just – I would really like to get a drink with him and just kind of talk about life and everything with him because I think he would be – he would be someone who you could have a really good, just like long conversation with. Absolutely. Well, I, some- I like it. I like it. Uh, number three, I'm going with the guy that when I do karaoke, it's only his music usually. <laughs> um, this guy has been around for forever. He still performs. I still want to see him. I know he, when he comes to Chicago, he only performs at Wrigley, so I guess I'll go. Uh, but I would still love to see this guy live, and that's Billy Joel. I mean, just the guy has made classic music. I know it's kind of a basic choice, but the guy has just been around for forever. He, sound, he seems like a great guy. What's that? Because it's a basic choice doesn't mean it's not a good one. Right. So lo- would love to meet the guy and uh, sit at a bar on, on a Saturday. Singing a song. I can't. Regular I crowd that. shuffles in. There's an old man sitting next to you. Making love. Making love to his tonic and gin. Okay, we're not going to get into song. But anyways. He does the most we can say. All right. Number two for me. This is my, this is my legend pick. I think uh, – you know, this is one of my all-time favorite bands, and I would love to hear the stories. And while the lead singer of this band would probably be pretty fun to have a drink with, uh, one, he's dead, and two, might be a little bit more in the clouds. Uh, not, I guess, technically, literally as well. Um, but, but I think I would like to get a little bit more of like a realistic kind of view from the stories, and that would be Brian May, the guitarist from Queen. Yeah, guitars. Uh, I think I think he probably has some legendary stories of both Freddie Mercury, the band Queen, and just kind of just the 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 kind of middle era of you know right after Rolling Stones and the Beatles kind of started to dwindle a little bit. Uh, they were they were the it band back in the back in the eighties. So uh, definitely definitely would love to get a drink with Brian May. I think he uh, I think he would have. Some some legendary stories to tell. I like it. It's a solid choice. Um, number two for me, I'm going with one of the classics. One of the, I mean, probably one of the greatest musicians of all time. Um, uh, the guy was just the ultimate, I, I still think the ultimate badass. I mean, they... Everyone says he's more of like a country singer. I feel like I, I really wouldn't categorize him as that just because, I mean, I love his music even to this day. Johnny Cash, I would love to meet that guy. Um, you know, I know he passed away a, a long time back, but I mean, even uh, when he came out with uh, um, the Ring I think of Fire. Or hurt myself. Um, you know, I, I, the guy, I think it was like two years before he died when he came out with the song. And, I mean, that's just incredible. I, I would love to meet the guy. I mean, he probably has so many great stories. I mean, you just can't go wrong with Johnny Cash. Great choice. Great, great choice. Uh Number one for me, yeah. Uh, this was this was an easy one for me. It's my favorite band of all time. It's a Chicago band. Can't get any better. That's Patrick Stump from Fall Out Boy. Uh, I would get a drink with Pete Wentz, but I think he parties a little bit too hard for my liking. So I don't think I, I don't think I could hang. So I'll go Patrick Stump. Uh, you know, one of my one of my favorite frontmen, one of my favorite bands. I think they have probably a lot of great stories. They were kind of the leaders of that pop punk all you know alternative uh, not pop punk alternative uh genre so definitely would love to get a drink with patrick stump and just talk about everything fun fact 
they were kicked out of our uh, <clears throat> out of Wheaton's community center. Right. First act. Um, all righty, for my number one, I am going with a guy who I love this band. This guy has, well, his current band. He used to be part of a, a certain grunge band back in the 90s. Uh, oh, yeah. This guy is probably the ultimate badass of today in the music industry. He broke his leg and still went out and performed. And that is Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. The guy just seems like such a cool guy. I, I would love to get a beer with him. He's one of those musicians who, like, you know, he's like he's not full of himself. Like he he's just he's a very like he's a very down to earth guy. Exactly, Ex extremely. And that's the other thing. Like I know we could have like three or four beers and probably call it a night. You know, wouldn't have to get too crazy as opposed to like I don't know. Billy Joe Armstrong, like I probably couldn't party with Billy Joe Armstrong all night. So, yeah. awesome, great list. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's there is such a deep list of people that that we could. Uh, for yeah. me, so some of them mentions Jimi Hendrix, one of the legends out there. Uh, Elton John, I mean, probably not now since he doesn't drink, but back in the day. When that motherfucker was partying, holy shit. Um, <laughs> Elvis Presley, kind of sure. one of the – Paul McCartney as well. Uh, yep. John Glover, uh, Charles Gambino, Brandon Yuri, Mick Jagger, uh, Jimmy Page, maybe even T. Swizzle. I don't know. Uh, I think, I think there's, just, there's, such, there's so many people that, like, I would definitely want to get a drink from. Solid. Uh, for, um, for mine – uh, some some guys I was also thinking about. Uh, I was also thinking about Paul McCartney, all of this. I mean, you're just thinking, you know, some of the greatest musicians of all time. You can't leave them off the list, or at least for honorable mentions. Um, I also had Prince. I, I would have loved to meet Prince. That guy I, would have been interesting. That's yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, I also had a chance to wrap around my, my list for honorable mentions just because the guys – Guy's a big Sox fan. We'd probably go to a game, you know. Um, I also had Justin Timberlake just because I love his SNL. Uh, whenever he's, he hosts SNL and the skits. Very, sorry, my tonight is. He he's a very funny guy. Um, yeah, awesome. uh, yeah, and then yeah, that concludes our uh, we'll get a drink with list. A lot, lot of fun ones. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe we'll revisit this list. We'll. Uh, there's plenty of categories we could choose from. So right. maybe we'll incorporate it into our podcast at some point. But uh, yeah, very solid list. But let's get to our final list. And that is the top five things we miss about the real world. And uh, before we jump into this list, I'm just going to make a pre preface about mine. I don't, I'm not going to make you change yours if you put like, I don't care. Sports is obviously the number one thing I miss, so I didn't put it on the list because that's oh. very like I, I I figured it was too easy. Like obviously I miss sports, so I le I, I left it off the list for now. Okay, obvious. It's obvious. I want I want I want a little bit more. Deal. If you want, I don't give, I don't give a shit. But for me personally, I just obviously that was what I miss. Okay. Um. um but you can give it a start. All right. All right. My number five is, I think, something that we're still going to miss even going into July, uh, just because it won't be the same. I feel like we missed it with – well, I didn't miss it really so much with Memorial Day, but some, some of the other days before that, I just miss celebrating holidays in general, yeah. celebrating it the proper way. We missed St. Patrick's Day. We missed um, – you know, my family always does something for Mother's Day – also Easter, usually I go to White Fence Farm and uh, eat my brains out, you know, I mean, eat until my stomach explodes, but so I, I definitely miss all those holiday traditions. Yeah, no, that's, that's a very good one. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if, I don't know if you've heard, but Taste of Melrose got canceled. That is. I did not uh, hear that. That's sad. That is, that is the ultimate shot to my heart. I've been going to that since, since I was in my mom's belly, like, and, 
they went when I was when my mom was pregnant with me. Like that is a family tradition, and I can't, we can't go to it this year. It sucks. It sucks. It's a Labor Day weekend tradition. Yep. Labor Labor Day weekend tradition. I mean, yeah, it sucks. Like, yeah, we're not, you know, we're not gonna get to go to these festivals or you know any any of these fun things. You know, just kind of oh well. But you know what? Hey, if we gotta take a year off from it in order to have it for the future, so be it. Right. Um, number five for me. I you know, if you look at me, it doesn't look like I really go to this place, but I do and I enjoy it. And that's the gym. Yeah, like, you know, you can go for runs. You can, you know, you can go for walks, and that's fine. I, I do that. You know, I got a treadmill here. But, I mean, I, I use the, the, the bikes. You know, I, you know, I miss lifting, you know, using the weight equipment to lift weights. I mean, I do miss being able to go to the gym because, you know, even if you have a treadmill, kind of having that option of what to do does right. help we're working out because it can get very monotonous if you're doing the same thing every day. So, you know, the, the gym offered you so many different things you could do. And I just, I really do miss the gym because it also was a big motivator of like, I'm paying a membership. I should, I, I need to go. If you're not paying that membership, you're not really, you're not going to be as uh, motivated to go. So number five for me is definitely the gym. I miss gyms. I, like I never it. thought, I, mean, I never thought I would utter that, that phrase. I, I mean, I miss that circuit room that we used to do at Planet Fitness together. I mean, I, I, I mean, if that opened up tomorrow, like, yeah, I would, or if things were back to normal, I'd go back to that. Absolutely. Um, number four for me is, uh, is uh, traveling. Just traveling in general. I, I know you can still travel. I know you can go on planes, go to places or whatever, but it's, it's not the same. It's not going to be the same for a while. It doesn't matter if you're driving or flying. I mean, before this started, the thrill of going on a trip somewhere, it's just so exciting. Like you're taking time off from work. You had this plan. Like I went to Boston last year. I mean, it was a phenomenal trip. I want something like that again. I, I really miss that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, that is definitely something that, it's gonna be gonna be weird. I mean, every year my family and I go to Vegas, and that's right. I don't know if I'm gonna go, and that is depressing because I have a gambling problem, and I need I need to gamble. So something with my money is gonna something bad's gonna happen if I can't if I can't get stupid in Vegas. So so just buy more beer. My if you look at my receipts, man, that's the only thing I do buy these days. Uh, <laughs> Number four for me is, this may sound weird, but uh, it's freely walking down aisles in grocery stores or any any store in general. I was at Jewel today, and, like, I mean, like, I understand why, but, like, having to, like, when you need something in the next aisle over, and you're already, like, you're already going this way, and you have to loop around to go to the other one, it's like, God, this fucking sucks, man, like. Or you forget that you're doing it. People yell at you. I like. I miss just being able to freely walk around my grocery store, going down the aisles I please in the direction I do. Uh, it sucks. I understand why we're doing it, but uh, I miss it because sometimes I forget that we're doing it, and I will be ready to turn down an aisle, and it's the arrows pointing the other direction. Shit, man! I got to go the other way now. So that sucks. Uh, that's, I, I, I very much miss that. And I don't know when that's going to return to normal, if ever. And that, that's going to be weird. It's going to be a while. Um, I definitely miss going to a Benny, uh, a Benny's, a Benny's and not really. <laughs> Benny's in Los uh, Santos. Right. <laughs> I miss going to a Benny's and just like freely walking through and just looking at alcohol. Looking at beer, looking at whiskey, looking at wine, whatever. Oh, no, uh, that's it. Like you're, you're afraid to like look at stuff. Like you're, it's like you have to know. You don't want to be standing in people's way because you can only go in one direction. And if you right. walk past, you can't back up. Like it's all, it's all too much. Too much. I mean, man. same with like, uh, like the deli meat section in a grocery store. Like I want to look at all the meats. Yeah. I want. What if there's a different kind of turkey out there? Right. 
I don't, don't want to be the chump that misses that. Right. Anyways, uh, getting back on track. My number three is something uh, I really miss. And I think once everything opens up, we're definitely going somewhere and going on one of these again. That's brewery tours. I miss going to a brewery. I, I just love hanging out at like a brew pub, but I also love going on the tours and seeing their facility. Usually the tour guides are like full of personality. They're hilarious. Uh, just guys you want to hang out with. Guys or girls. Um, yes. Sorry. No. Yeah. Uh, very much miss breweries. Miss everything. Um, number three for me is movie theaters. Uh, we were supposed to get Black Widow, Wonder Woman, and all these awesome movies coming out. And I don't know when the fuck they're coming out now. And yeah. I, I mean, some people maybe don't like the movie going experience, but let me tell you, man, I was going to the movies every week for like a very long period of time. I had a movie pass. I was, I was all set. I was seeing movies I didn't even think I would see, but I just miss it, man. I miss walking in, smelling the freshly popped popcorn, getting in my seat. Now, the good thing about this is probably only going to let like half the people in. So I'm not going to have to sit next to nobody. I'm going to have a spot for my coat and my popcorn. I like to spread out the movies. So that's going to be a positive. There you but, go. Um, but it, I, I just, I miss movies, movie theater, man. I, like, yeah, I like watching movies at home, but something about just going to the movies, especially like a big blockbuster, like this is the blockbuster movie season and we're missing it. Like right. there are so many movies coming out this year. I was like, yeah, let's fucking go, man. Uh, could you imagine, <laughs> could you imagine if Avengers Endgame got, got delayed? Could you imagine I talked to Carolyn, my fiance, about that, and I I can't even imagine. I I, I, I can't. I, I like it would yeah, be horrible. I, yeah. So you know, it, it, it's depressing, man. Like I was really excited for Black Widow. I was very I was very excited. Like, the number one movie I wanted to see this year was Wonder Woman eighty four. Loved the first one. Yes. Excited for the second one. And I don't know when the hell is coming out now. They say November, but. Who the fuck knows, man? But yeah, uh, I miss movie theaters so much. I <clears throat> uh, 100% agree. And I really hope, you know, it sounded like they were going to bring back drive-ins. So if they did that, I would definitely go to one. There's one, I think it's Is in St. Charles. I will, I will piss in a bottle. I don't care. <laughs> Just to see some new movies. Man. <laughs> All right. Um, my number two, um, since my number one has to do with sports, but I will go into detail and explain, you know, yeah. the reasoning behind it. But number two is I just want a beer on tap. I just want to go to a bar, a brewery, anywhere. I, I miss having a beer on tap. I, I, it's just the way that beer was meant to be drank. You know, not out of cans or bottles. You know, I still enjoy it. You know, I make the best of it. I chill glasses in the freezer. I pour it into my glass. It's still very good. It's still not the same. There's nothing that will beat a beer on tap. Luckily, breweries and bars are starting to open up a little bit. So I will get it, get that experience at some point soon. But um I, I, I can't wait for it. I got to have a beer on tap. Yeah. Uh, number two for me was, was bars. And it's kind of twofold. Bars with my friends. Like, right. Like, I guess I didn't really say it, but like, like, obviously, I miss hanging with my friends. And most of the time I'm home with my friends, we were hanging out at a bar. Like, we were. It's camaraderie. We were, that's what you need yeah. at bars. Like, and, you know, yeah, we have these Zoom game nights, and that's fun and all. But after a while, it's like, fuck, man. I just want to be at the same table with everybody having a beer, having a fucking blast, listening to the music. Like, it's just not, you know, hanging out over Zoom is not the same. And I miss my friends. I miss my bartenders. I miss my, my beers on tap. Like, it, I miss bars. And I'm very excited to have them back. I'm going to wait a little bit until I make sure everything's safe. But, you know, same. 
I just miss it, man. Like I miss going to old, you know, I, you know, we used to go to old town all the time. There's, we're going to, we're going to have to go to uptown. Um, sorry, the uptown. Going to have to meet, going to see my girl, Michelle, the bartender. Uh, That's true. I miss that. I, I mean, like, like I miss my dive bars. I miss, yeah. I just miss having a plan on a set. Like on a Saturday, be like, Hey guys, like there's this sick bar down downtown. Let's go check it out. Like, just miss it. I would gladly pay fifty dollars for a beer on tap right now. I would too. I even I miss like the. Uh, I I would go to those self pour places that charge you like a dollar an ounce, or whatever. Yeah, like open those open those places up. I will pay whatever. I just I want to go. I want to go with my friends. Have the camaraderie. Like I said. Um, <clears throat> Just to get out. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. It's the it's to be like, hey, we actually have a plan this weekend. I'm right. not just playing Call of Duty, which hey, double XP this weekend, all right. But I miss it, you know. <laughs> it's something to look forward to, though. You know, yeah. you're at work. You're thinking like, you know, everyone is working for the weekend. When the weekend's the same thing as the weekday, it's not as fun to work towards. Exactly. So. No, absolutely. And Rob, your number one? My number one is, you know, you said sports, but I just want to go baseball in general. I want to go to a baseball game. I yep. just I miss being able to go, just having the experience. I, I want to go to a Sox game. Any, any, actually any baseball game. I don't even care. If, if I'm going to a Sox game, I don't care if they're getting blown out by eight rounds. I would go to an Orioles versus Rays in the Rays stadium where I have to sit up in the 300 section. If it meant that there was baseball that I haven't seen before going on and I'll pay 30 for for a fucking Miller light there. Let me tell you. Exactly. hundred percent. It's, it's just the experience of going to a baseball game. I mean, you grab your hot dog, your beer. It's just, it's a beautiful day out. It's, yeah. Experience no, I, like none other. Full heartedly agree. Uh, I mean, like, obviously, I said, obviously, I miss it. So, like, I didn't really put it on my list, but I had two games already planned to go to. I had, we had, you and I had another one set. Uh, yep. I guess I'm going to have to go another year without seeing Mike Trout. That's another story for another day. Um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, the Wrigley, the, there is nothing in, you know, look, you know, you're a Sox fan. So maybe it'll be hard to convince you on this, but there is nothing like seeing a baseball game Friday afternoon in the Wrigley Field bleachers. That is so, that is one of the best baseball viewing experiences you'll ever have, and I haven't gotten that this year. Hey, Friday afternoon at a baseball game, that's always a great attitude. You're off work early or you were off work Friday in general. I mean, yeah. what can be Not, better? Yeah. You started yeah, your yeah. weekend early. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, I very much miss that. And, I mean, I, we're probably not going to be able to go to any any sporting events in 2020 and maybe not even 2021. At least right. we have playoff hockey coming. Playoff hockey coming. That's right. And maybe Chicago's the hub city. Who knows? Uh, but number one for me, uh, if you've been watching these videos, you'll notice – that it, I look grosser and grosser here and here. I miss my barber. I finally, my barber is reopening. Actually, they reopened today. I have an appointment for next Friday. I am so excited to cut this shit down, get this trimmed. I miss my barber. Uh, I'm going to give him a huge tip because he's got a lot of work on his hands. I miss it, man. I miss, this thing's a mess in the mornings. And uh, a lot of upkeep. So, miss my bar. That that is the number one thing. Like, I never thought I would miss my barber so much, but I've been gone almost three. You know, I got my I got my haircut at the end of February, so I haven't gotten a haircut in like three months, essentially. So, actually, yeah, three months it sucks. This, thing, this isn't a good look for me. I miss now it too. I mean, this is exactly why I'm wearing a hat. I mean. Like it, it's rough. It's uh, 
I mean, my hat hair is keeping my hair out of my face right now, but that's why I wear a hat. I mean, my beard, I can kind of clean it up a little bit. I've, be, I've been just letting it go, though, just because it stopped. Yeah, like, but, you, can, you can trim it yourself, but you're not a professional. You know what I mean? Like That's true. When you're looking in the mirror, like, you're like, yeah, it looks good. But then you, like, look a little later, like, fuck, I missed that. Like, barbers, they, they, they aren't trying to, like, weirdly stretch it. They, they have a good view. They do, 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 and they're good to go. And I miss yep. that. And you look good afterward. You do, yeah. Hairs on fleek. Um, yeah. Any uh, anything else? Maybe you know some honorable mentions that you uh, that you thought about. Like I said, Benny's was definitely one of them. Uh, another one I know. You know, Joe touched on bars. I was going to say bar crawls and beer tastings in general. Joe and I missed a huge one back in it was March. Back- for St. Patty's Day. Yeah. I mean, it was right when the shit started. Uh, the Zoo Brew's probably not going to happen this year. Really going to miss that. I mean, and doing, I mean, who knows? Even come Halloween time, if we do a bar crawl around that time, I don't even know if we will be able to. It's normally what we do, but who knows if it's going to happen. So I miss bar crawls and going to the bar in general, uh, just hanging out with your friends. You know, it's just, you can't ask for a better time, and it sucks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I kind of touched on with bars, but, you know, just hanging with friends, like, it doesn't even need to be at a bar. Just, like, everyone meeting up at a place, playing games, chilling out, catching up, you know. As you get older, you don't get to see your friends as much. So, it does it does suck, and I, I'm very looking forward to, me, to kind of meeting up with friends again. Uh, another one for me, yeah, having plans, just having something to look forward to. Uh, taking the L into the city. Uh, my sister lives in Oak Park. I used to take the L all the time, and I would park my car there, take, my L, take the L in the city all the time. It's a gorgeous view going in. Um, I, I missed the L. It's dirty. So, I, I mean, I, I, I had no reason to go to the city via public transportation. So, uh, you know, yeah, you know, sometimes it's dirty and you get stuck with some weird people or someone's trying to sell you something or try to beg for money. But you know what? That's part of the experience of going of going on the L and I just miss it. And then my final thing is my shows ending on time. Uh, many of my shows got cut short early because of production delays or they weren't able to edit them. And that just sucks, man. There's nothing yeah. worse than having it. Like, like I said, could you imagine if Avengers Endgame got pushed out or – Let's go the finale. Let's say this happened during the finale of Breaking Bad. Could you imagine getting through all the episodes and then the finale? Like they they leave you a granite state. He's a, he's evading the feds and then like they're like, well, in eight months you'll probably figure out what happens next in the saga. <laughs> like, could you could you imagine? No. Imagine the game. I mean, I know the last season of Game of Thrones wasn't good, but could you imagine the final episode of Game of Thrones got delayed until fucking like. July 2021. <laughs> Could That's you imagine? What I was just thinking. I, I, um, you know, I know, like hindsight bias, but I wish that would have happened because it would have given them enough time to really rethink this. I don't think there was any saving that show. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I just like Walking Dead, The Flash, Supergirl, Batwoman, like all these shows just ended on. They ended on a fine note, but it was just kind of weird. It was just like there was definitely more that was supposed to be filmed, and I was just up in the air, man. It sucks. At least, God, Survivor was filmed and edited. Thank God. Right. That saved, that saved me this quarantine. But yeah, that uh, that's our list. I missed the real world. I hope we have it soon. Um, Rob, any last notes? This is our final, this is our final send off for the quarantine show. Uh, we will be back maybe next week. Probably not. Uh, my sister's wedding is next week. So going to be a little busy with that. So probably sure. the week afterwards, uh, we'll discuss that later. Uh, but we will have half acre. Uh, we'll have four, four beers lined up. We will be back right here in the studio. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be back to normal. We'll be back in podcast form. I'm going to be looking to take these episodes 
into podcast form. I have the audio files for them. I'm sure there's, I, look, I'm not very good with technology of like, I'm fine with technology, but like editing all that shit, I'm not good at that. I need to hire someone to do that and I don't have the money to do that. So um, we'll get the, we'll, we'll get these downloaded. If you didn't, if you didn't watch the videos, you didn't want to, you didn't want to have to run it all, th- all the way through YouTube because you can't close it or else it'll pause the video. So I get it. Uh, so right. we will look at converting these into podcast form. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is it, Rob. Any any closing remarks on the quarantine before we close the show out? I the only thing is, I really hope it's our last one. I hope we don't have to go back in and uh, do quarantine episodes again. Might have to, but uh, you know, fingers crossed. Knock on wood. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I, I guess maybe my final note is here: as things open up as bars, restaurants, barbershops, movie theaters, anything that was closed down before him that is reopening, one, number one, respect your servers and your bartenders. They're going to be overwhelmed. And the last thing they need is someone complaining because their burger isn't cooked fully. Boo fucking who? At least you have a restaurant that you can eat a fucking burger at. Like, or they don't have a side of ranch. Like, yeah, like, boo hoo. Eat your meal. Be respectful. Be nice. Like, these people were either out of work or minimally working, not making the usual money, the 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 small amount of money that they were already making. Right. Be respectful, and for the love of God, tip those servers, bartenders. Oh, yeah. Tip them. That I'm not I'm not even twenty percent. If you had the luxury of still being able to work, making your money, spread the love. Tip these guys more than your normal amount. These people have either been working minimally or haven't been working at all. They haven't had the chance to make that money. So tip them. Spread the wealth. Spread the love. Well, you know, we were all in this together, and. Just because the quarantine's over doesn't mean we can lose that mentality. Tip your servers, tip your bartenders, tip your bartenders, tip people who weren't able to work during this time. They need it most. Right. I'll get off my sofa. That is, that is something I, I think is very important right now as we get back into to some normalcy. Please make sure that we're taking care of those that didn't have the opportunity to, to, to work. Yeah. 100%. And I mean, stay safe, you know, wear your mask when you're at these places and you're not eating, you know, take yes. care of yourselves as well. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, just because, just because some, some things are, doesn't mean you can just go walk up right next, like wear your mask six feet apart. If, if you just go back to your normal ways, this thing's going to continue to spread. Right. You have to make concessions for now, but so, yeah. absolutely. Very good point. Ready to close right. out? Let's close this bad boy out. As always, we invite you to try these beers along with us. Responsibly. Stay safe. Congratulations on hopefully surviving the quarantine. And cheers. cheers.